All right, and so we will go ahead and kick off our May directors meeting. And I'm going to pull up the agenda, but in the meantime, if you haven't put your name and site information in the chat, please do so for attendance purposes. Um, and if you wanna put in there your uh, favorite summer activity too, uh, that'd be fun and getting us all excited for summer, which is just around the corner. Oh, it's Bard's last director's meeting. Okay. Here we go. Vic, do you wanna take it away with a funding update? Sure. <clears throat> well, we are getting an increase for uh, the, uh, the next year. Uh, it's not a big increase, but uh, I think it's a couple hundred thousand, which uh, gives us uh, when they distribute it around the states, uh, it'll be a little bit more than what we had this year. So it's going to be uh, probably over a little bit over seven million. I don't have that exact number because we didn't get it. We don't get that until July. But that's certainly good news from, you know, the news we've had in the past where, you know, we were always in danger of being uh, eliminated. So uh, also, uh, CASA is uh, going through some changes. Uh, all of the people behind the scenes have quit the department. Uh, we had uh, somebody who started CASA and uh, she left, and then uh, the, uh, I, the I think he was the number two guy at CASA, Steve Crew. He's gone, uh, and so my privileges have gone up a little bit uh, in the system. And um, you know, uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll get through this. So, anybody have any questions on that? Otherwise, we'll go right to the uh, uh, budget and carryover. So, uh, pop quiz. Who knows how much we can carry over uh, at the end of this fiscal year? Anybody want to give me that answer? 15%. <laughs> That's correct. You get a gold star. Now, that amount was, you know, not my choice. There is actually a document on the department website for the title programs. And, uh, you know, I was told this is with the amount that all the title programs are going to be doing. So uh, we're kind of locked into that. Um, also, by next week, Thursday, I need an email from you telling me how much carryover you want to do. Because one thing that hasn't changed is I can put that right into your new contract. I'm working on those contracts now and I'll, I can very easily plug that in like we did last year. I take your, your award amount and then I just simply plus carryover of you know, whatever amount it is that you want to carry over. And then uh, we'll come up with a total amount. Uh, that is very, very easy compared to going through the amendment process. Uh, because the amendment process, then you've got to fill out extra paperwork. Um, and it's got to go through the system again. And, you know, a lot of times um, these things have a tendency to drop off the map. And then, you know, I've got to trace it all down. So I would highly, highly recommend you get me a number uh, by, uh, you know, the end of next week, Thursday, so that I can get something plugged in for you. And then uh, one of the big problems that may even prevent us from doing amendments is the, the CASA issue, because once those uh, contracts get in and put into CASA, then the, the, if there's an amendment, um, that means another series, you know, another meeting with the folks at CASA to get everything adjusted. And uh, 
that's not an easy thing to do, especially when we may not have people that know how to do it yet. <laughs> so do everything you can to get me the, that number. Um, and hopefully you're working on your budgets to, you know, spend over those balances. Um, I know it's been hard because we've had a staffing shortage. Um, but might I suggest the weather's nice. Let's take these kids on a field trip. You know, and when you're on that field trip, let's buy them lunch and let's get them an ice cream. You know, um, you can pay for the rental of the bus. You can pay for the gas in the bus. You can pay for the bus driver salary for taking you on that field trip. However, you can't buy a bus. <laughs> that's a capital expense. So, you know, that's one easy way to spend down that balance. And you have to have um, everything uh, spent down by June 30th. Any questions? Okay. Well, if you, you have any questions, you feel free to shoot me an email or give me a phone call. Um, I'm always here for you. Let's go into the next thing and I'll have Brittany uh, talk about the Wallace Foundation um, summer program. Yes, so the Wallace Foundation is offering a summer professional development and technical assistance program. Um, and it is a, a program that's being offered in collaboration with um, state education agencies and sites. So um, we wanted to see if there would be any directors that would be interested in doing this and having some PD about summer programming um, and some technical assistance about summer programming. Uh, and if you are interested, Vic will send in an application for Iowa to participate in this. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. And we can send out some more information after today's call too, if you'd like to look it over a little bit more. Brittany, this is Dawn at St. Mark. Do you have any more information as far as like what, what it means by summer PD? Like, is it very general to running a summer program? Is it more specific than that? Vic, do you know? Uh, Brittany, why don't you forward everyone the uh, email that I sent to you about that program? Um, you know, they don't have, they, they've got an overview and okay. they're wanting states to sign up. And some of these programs are, are good, but there's a lot of extra paperwork. And I don't like doing extra paperwork unless I've got people that want to sign up for it. Um, so yeah, Brittany can send that out to you guys. So you take a look at it and then respond, you know, are you interested in participating? And then if we get a couple people that are interested, um, I'll fill out the form. You know, there's, there's always a bunch of forms. Uh, the other day I got a, a form from you for youth. Before they come out, they, you know, I have to fill out a couple pages of uh, information. Um, So we'll see if there's some interest in that. Yes, I'll definitely send out more information and see if I can do a little bit more digging to see what, what the topics really are. So stay, stay tuned for that. Next, we have on the agenda the summer symposium. So um, actually, Vic, is this supposed to be the summer workshop, not the summer symposium? Well, there is a summer symposium right. and that's from the U.S. Department of Education, yeah. and that's going to be a virtual event that you guys can attend. Um, and I thought sometimes, you know, sometimes we've called our things symposiums. I wasn't sure if that was the one that we were planning for August. Yeah, so that's, I think, our summer workshop. I just wanted to make sure I was being clear on, on what we were talking about. So we are planning our summer workshop in August. 
And it, similar to the spring workshop we had in April, this will just be, um, you know, half a day of professional development and learning virtually for network or for the network and for grantees. Um, and as a reminder, grantees are required to attend either the spring workshop or the summer workshop. So if you didn't attend the spring workshop, please make sure that you do attend the summer workshop. Um, and of course, if you want to attend both, please do. The programming and content will be a little different at the next one. So it won't be duplicative for you to attend both. So I encourage you to do that. And yes, this will be virtual. Good question, Jenna. We haven't identified a date yet, but we've heard from the PD committee that the end of August is ideal. And so we're um, likely looking at that end of August, probably a, a Tuesday or Wednesday is what we've noticed has worked well. If you have um, comments about the date, please put them in the chat, but otherwise we will work with the PD committee to identify the date for the summer, or the summer workshop and we'll get back to you all on that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to bring up today was just if there were any topics that you all wanted to hear about or learn more about at the summer symposium or at the summer workshop. Gosh, that keeps tripping me up. So at the spring workshop, we covered um, literacy. We had our literacy coach, Teresa Slaughter, go through some literacy best practices. And we also had Cassie Gerst talking about um relationships with youth and social emotional learning and um, really inspirational uh, stuff there. And so if there's any any other topics that you would like to explore for the summer simple or summer workshop, maybe it's computer science, math, um, leadership, uh, trauma informed care, whatever it might be, whatever professional development needs your sites have, if you could put those in the chat, any ideas you have, and then we can look at trying to find speakers and trainers for those specific topics. With, with these things, we, you know, we know it's a requirement, but we want it to be as useful and as meaningful as possible for you and your programs um, and really getting you the assistance and support that you need. So if you want to check the chat. I put the information for the federal uh, summer symposium in there. There's a link that you can go on there and then register. And it's in July. Yes, and that one is the, the federal national summer symposium on 21st century. And Vic will be talking a little bit about what we're doing in Iowa, but it's also open to everyone um, to learn about what other states are doing and some other best practices and topics. So yeah, please feel free to put ideas in the chat if you have them for the summer workshop at the end of August, but otherwise, um, or you can send me an email, feel free, but otherwise we will work with the professional development committee to identify some, some topics and some speakers for that and get you an agenda and a date out as soon as we have that identified. Tips on new math workshop and leadership. Thanks, Billy. Those are good ideas. Barb to leadership or math for after school. Great. Yep, and Vic just put in the chat too that we are working on trying to find a math coach for next year. So similarly to how we've offered literacy coaching in the past, we're hoping to offer some math enrichment coaching for sites to use. So you can get a little extra support and one-on-one -on -one assistance in the math arena. Yep, we've uh, we've offered literacy for a couple of years, and uh, the other GEPRA measure we report on is you know math. So we're going to work on math for a little bit, and then we'll probably go back and forth between literacy and math over the next couple of years. Yes, absolutely. All right, Vic, I think that's it on that. I'll turn it over back to you for GEPRA. Okay, hey, this is everybody's favorite topic, GEPRA measures. <laughs> um, you know, we're coming out ahead on this. It was, I think, worth the, you know, I think we worked on the measures for over five years to reduce them from 14 down to five. <laughs> oh. 
Stop for a minute. That was a question. Yeah, there's some feedback. So if you all can make sure you're on mute, please. Okay, right. well, I have a question for everyone. And we've had a, a few meetings and I have suggested that of those five measures, four of them are gonna be reports that your data person or a district data person is gonna have to run for you. And I'm wondering, has anybody done a test report yet just to see what the, this is gonna look like? Uh, this is Cassie with Burlington. We have been um, running data and putting last year's data in. Okay, good. And it does it look, you know, like it's going to be a little bit easier this year? Oh, with only five? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be much easier. And yeah, it's um, it just takes some manipulation with the GPA problem, but um, with the GPA for seventh graders, but Otherwise, yeah, it's just some work. Well, and you know, keep in mind, there's nobody that's going to be looking at what you turn in as far as your conversion from grades to GPA or from whatever uh, system of grading or reporting to parents that you use, converting it over to GPA. So um, at least not yet. <laughs> um, so, We've got a June 28th webinar, best practice webinar, and uh, Caitlin is going to be uh, working with me and we'll be going over the GEPRA and the APR uh, in more detail. Right now, the APR is still hasn't been updated to how it's going to look for the new GEPRA measures. And I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to show you on June 28th what the new APR um, windows are looking like, you know, and go over some of that as well. But um, I sent out uh, the new windows and it's, it's pretty good. Uh, we've got your data entry window number one runs from June 29th to October 12th. So that's the longest window we've ever had to input data. And you're going to put in activity, staffing, and participation in that window. The second window goes from October 24th to February 1st of 2023, and that's going to be your outcomes. It says on there outcomes and certification, but I actually do the certification, so you don't have to worry about that. Just do you know, doing your outcomes. Um, so that gives us a lot of time to you know, get the data and to put it into the APR uh, a lot more than we've ever had before. And we've got fewer measures. And the measures are all based on um, improvement rather than proficiency. So I'm very um, happy that they've made these changes. However, with any kind of change, you know, there's always things that can go wrong. Uh, they can go sideways, you know, things that we didn't anticipate. And I think that's why they're giving us these long windows. Um, next year, we might have shorter windows as you know we get more used to uh, putting things into the system. So put that on your calendars for you know June 28th. Um, hopefully we'll I'll be able to show you the system. It should be open for me because uh, you know there's that state part that we get to put in. Uh, Tim and I will be doing updates, but then um, the, the window for the rest of you guys will open on the, uh, the 29th. So does anyone have any questions on the new GEPRA or the APR? Anybody have a favorite GEPRA measure? Well, that's okay. Not everybody's a big fan of data. But the, the nice thing about the way they've structured this is the, the reporting on the progress we make is going to 
uh, give our program a stronger case in Congress uh, that number one, we should get more funding. And then number two, we should not be scheduled for elimination because we are doing a tremendous service for kids that need this program. Um, I think that, you know, we, we, if we didn't have the APR, we would not be here today. Um, and I wanna shout out to Sylvia Lyles. I mean, she was a huge champion. She used to be over the 21st century and she's got a promotion. So she's higher up in the US Department of Ed. But uh, she was the one that put this into place and uh, the timing was perfect. Thanks, Vic. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to tell the story of all the great work that you're doing without that important data. So, you know, sometimes it can be tedious, but it's important and helps make sure we serve kids well and, and keep maintaining our funding to serve kids well. I have a good question for Vic. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Yes, uh, so you mentioned that uh, next year we will get uh, a small increase. Um, how much would that be per site? Oh, <laughs> I'm glad you asked that question. Because when I talk about the money, it's for the new round of awards. Your money that you have is locked in on your contract. So it's not like we're going to tell you that we, we boosted your contract. I wish we could, but uh, you know that's not how it works. Uh, for the next round of grant applications, there's more money available. And the more money we have available, the more um, sites we can fund. Um, like we get, went down a little bit of money and we, I think there was one year we only had um, maybe five or six total um, programs that we were able to fund. Uh, this year we were funded nine. And, you know, in some years we fund even more, it depends on how much money they asked for. Thank you for clarifying. I thought maybe there's more money coming my way. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, hey, I, I like that idea and I wish I could do it. <laughs> Next time I'm at a federal meeting, I will certainly ask them. I always ask them for more money for Iowa because you know what? Some of these big states like California, Texas, Florida, they send back more money than we get. And I've asked him, I says, is there a way that you could take that money and give it an extended deadline, you know, and, and put it back in uh, and let some smaller states have a little extra? Um, so they haven't responded on that one, but I know they'd like to spend all the money. And it's not always easy because that uh, money has a expiration date. And if we don't spend it by a certain date, we have to send it back. And in Iowa, we, uh, we spend all of our money. We're not like uh, some of these big states where, you know, they get more money than they can even spend. Any other questions? Okay, Brittany. Okay. Take Just it away. Wanted, thanks, Vic. Just wanted to remind everyone um, that if you have not received the email earlier this week, we recently um, with the Iowa After School Alliance just opened registration for the early or for the impact after school conference. Um, and we've opened this early bird registration um, so that you can make start planning now uh, to attend. And the dates are September 22nd and 23rd this year. And we're going to be hosting the conference at the Blank Park Zoo, which is a new location for us. And we're really excited. Our partners at the zoo have some exciting things for us to be able to do while we're there. They have a new space for conferences and meetings. Um, so it's going to be a great opportunity. And hopefully you'll be able to get some ideas about hands-on uh, learning and hands-on activities you can do with your kids. 
or with your students um, this next school year. Uh, I wanted to note that we did open a, a registration early this year because we know that several sites have extra funds to spend down soon, as Vic mentioned earlier. And so um, paying for your registration for the Impact After School Conference is an allowable expense under your professional development budget. And so if that's an area where you need to spend down still a little bit more, this is your opportunity to do that. I will put the link in the chat here for you. And then yes, I'll make sure that um, to send out the information to you all after the meeting as well. I know some of you didn't get the, the large email, so I'll make sure that gets forwarded to you. I know we've received a few questions about um, hotel options because we usually do our conference at a hotel um, because of the convenience of lodging. Um, we will still be reserving a hotel room block near the zoo and we'll provide you all of that information and directions um, as we get those details finalized. So we will still give you um, those options. It'll just be a short drive this year to, to get to the hotel from the uh, conference space. Keep in mind, it's pretty close to the airport and mm -hmm. the airport has a lot of hotels and they, they rarely fill up unless there's canceled flights. So you can always get a good deal on a hotel uh, by the airport. Yes, absolutely. And we're working on trying, um, I think the block we're looking at, the hotel we're looking at, we're trying to negotiate getting the state rate for you all too. Um, so hopefully that eases some of the expense as well, but we're working on all of that. Any questions I can answer about the impact after school conference for those who haven't attended before, it really is a great two days of, of learning and connecting about after school in Iowa and meeting your colleagues from across the state and sharing ideas um, and really getting information to take back and implement into your programming. The past two years, um, it's, it's been a different kind of conference because of the pandemic, but we're hoping that this fall we'll be able to have more of a normal experience for you all. And we're just really excited to get everyone back together. All right. That was the last item on our planned agenda, Vic. So is there anything else you had or should we just open it up for questions and any sharing that people might have? We always like to hear from you guys on things that are going on in your programs, and that's where the sharing is so valuable. And, you know, uh, one of the, the topics everyone's dealing with is staff shortages. I mean, maybe can, somebody can share that they've uh, made some progress and, you know, how, what, what did you do to um, remediate your staffing shortages? Maybe that's something that you know, we can uh, replicate. This is Barb. And I just want to say, this is my actually last meeting as the program director. Oh, I'm taking, no. oh, Vic, you're so dear. <laughs> um, I'm taking a position in the district. I'm just making a lateral move actually, but I would like to introduce you to Catherine Wiedemeyer. And we, um, Catherine has been our food core service member for two years in our district. And she shares our mission. Um, and we now grabbed her from food core and we hired her as the new director. So everybody wave and say Hello. hi to Catherine. She'll be your new person. Wonderful. Although I'm already thinking of trying to figure out a way to get to the conference because I would love to be at the zoo. So I'm already like conniving and figuring how can the super, how can I get my superintendent to let me go to this, but might see you at the zoo. <laughs> You're always welcome at our meetings, Barb. Thank you. And you guys have all really helped me. So thank you for all the time that we've talked and spent together. Yes, you will be missed, Barb, but welcome, Catherine, and we'll make sure we connect with you and get you everything you need to be as successful as possible in your new role. And I know that this group here, all of the directors across the state are more than willing to help um, give you advice, answer questions, because um, they've all been where you are right now. So uh, it's a good group and we're just always here to help. 
I, speaking speaking of that, uh, Barb was on the PD committee and regularly attended our bi-monthly calls. And so um, I don't know if that's something Catherine's interested in, but if anybody else is interested in the PD committee, we would love to have you. <laughs> And then um, if, can we do committee shares? Yeah. Okay, so I put in the chat um, a PDF, it's called adjusted PD template. Um, so the PD committee had been working on how to provide more clarity and definitions around the PD template that we all fill out. Um, and so this is the adjusted one and for you to take a look at and let us know if you have any comments um, on the definitions or the columns that we are deleting. Vic liked the adjustments, the committee all made positive comments. So um, once we have all of your approval, then hopefully Iowa After School Alliance can make the new template and send that out to us um, with those uh, new definitions. Um, mainly instead of having um, the category, the drop down where you just select, we had a training and it was the whole child and you just select one thing, you're able to select multiple uh, categories because we know that one training may affect multiple and that way we get a fuller definition of um, the state has a better picture of what PD we are doing from what categories. Um, and then we added additional um, uh, category descriptions, and then the column where it said salary and salary and hourly for that training, we eliminated that as well because it was hard when you have salary people and hourly people. How do you calculate what that cost was? So um, I just wanted to share that out. I love that change, Cassie, uh, kind of related to evaluation and data management, which I can also share for our committee that we are going to be focused on the 21 APR windows that Vic has kind of laid out and that the best practice um, workshop on June 28th will be kind of all about uh, running through that, testing it out um, as we get prepared to, you know, for the first time, enter everything under these new BEPA measures. And then we're continuously kind of working on our committee guide um, to just share just the general best practices of evaluation and all about what the committee is focused on. So that would be our update. Well, and also the Caitlin's Evaluation Committee has got a data collection template that's in a spreadsheet form that you can use. And they've got a uh, uh, a teacher survey for that fifth GEPRA measure where we're looking at uh, student engagement. So those are available for you. Um, and they're posted on the uh, uh, 21cclc.com website um, under the evaluation committee. I can give a quick update for the Communication, Sustainability, and Partners um, Committee. We just met yet yesterday, Tuesday, it's Friday, two days ago, um, and we were kind of collectively working on our um, committee summary, I think we decided we were calling it, not guide, <laughs> but um, I think that no specific details, but I think we got a good scope of what we're going to be focusing on next year and some ideas that, that the Communications Committee will be able to provide some more resources out to the rest of the committees and everyone um, and kind of have some tools and kits prepared to better start up programs or kind of collaborate on what we're all working on. And I can report on behalf of the Family Engagement Committee. Um, they are working on creating a Google Drive uh, for different family engagement ideas so that we can share that out with you all, all of the grantees across the state um, so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel uh, every time you wanna do a family engagement event or activity 
you can go to the Google Drive and get some ideas from your peers and, and see what's worked in other communities and in other school districts. So um, we'll be working on that over the next few meetings and we'll get that out to you hopefully in the next few months. And Cassie, thanks for sharing that PD template. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my follow-up email too for everyone. So if there is feedback or um, additions or corrections that you'd like to suggest, please respond to that email um, because this is kind of our last round of feedback on that before that is the new template that we use going forward. And we have new grantees starting um, next month. So we wanna make sure they have uh, that version handy when they get started. I'd like to report out on the new grantee committee. <laughs> um, as a reminder, keep in mind, it's not just new grantees, it's staff transition. So as you're getting some new staff, um, especially if they're, you know, over, a, you know, a building, uh, you may want to have them do the be part of that committee because we go over um, a lot of the things systematically over the course of each year so that uh, you're better prepared to run the program. And there's just tons of resources available that'll be very helpful for anybody that's you know brand new in the programs. Yes, absolutely. And that's a good reminder for me that too, we have our new grant orientation coming up on June 10th. Um, it's virtual this year and it's required for all new awardees for this next fiscal year. But it's also a good opportunity if you have new staff or new directors and you aren't a new grantee, but still want that additional support. Um, feel, I'll forward out that calendar invitation to you all and you can attend if that would be helpful or share with your new staff if that would be helpful. Um, so that's just another way of learning and kind of another orientation for everyone who's new. Anyone else wanna share? Well, all right, seeing none, I think we can wrap up a little bit early and give you guys 20 minutes of your day back. I know it's a busy time here at the end of the school year. Um, so I will be following up probably on Monday once we get the cloud video recorded or the re video recording uploaded and everything and all of these resources put together. But I will follow up with more information about that Wallace Foundation professional development opportunity. I'll follow up with more information about the Impact After School Conference, follow up with the PD template for your feedback, um, and then I'll also be sending out the uh, new grant orientation calendar invitation for you to share with anybody who's new at your organization. In the meantime, you know how to reach Vic and I, so please uh, feel free to reach out with any questions you have. We're always here to help, always here for support. Um, and also Nikki's not here today, but I did want to acknowledge Nikki Clausen. She's um, moving on at the end of the school year too from Council Bluffs and onto a new adventure. Um, so again, we think the world of Nikki. She's been great for the program in Council Bluffs. And if you uh, think of her, send her a note and wish her well and wish her good luck on her next chapter too. All right, Vic, anything else? No, I think that uh, we covered quite a bit of important information. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, get working on those uh, carryover amounts and send those to me as quick as you can. And uh, look forward to seeing everyone at the next meeting and have a wonderful summer. Yes, thank you all. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.